Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve some multiple choice questions on polynomials. The sum of the zeros of the polynomial 2x square minus 8x plus 6 is. So this is a quadratic polynomial because the highest power of x is 2. We need to find out what is the sum of the zeros. Zeros are the values of x which when substituted in this equation makes the entire equation or expression equal to 0. So we have to find out the sum of those zeros or roots or the solutions. Now before we could begin, let us write down the general form of the quadratic polynomials. So it is given as ax square plus bx plus c where a, b and c are coefficients or constants which are associated with the x term. Now let us compare the given expression with the general form of the quadratic polynomial. Now with x square we have 2 here. So here a is equal to 2 by comparison and we have b is equal to minus 8 and in place of c that is the constant we have 6 over here. Now once we get the values of a, b and c the coefficients let us find out the sum of the zeros. Now sum of the zeros is given as minus b over a. Now we have the value of b with us that is negative 8. So we have minus of minus 8 over the value of a we have is 2. So minus of minus we get plus. So plus 8 over 2. So both go in the table of 2. 2 1 times, 2 4 times. So we have the sum of the zeros as 4. So the answer over here is option D, which is 4. Let us move on to the second question now. The following figure shows the graph of y is equal to p of x, where p of x is a polynomial in variable x. The number of zeros of the polynomial p of x is. Now we have been given a curve which represents the polynomial in variable x. Now to find out the number of zeros of the given polynomial, we need to know that any curve when it touches the x-axis, that gives us the number of zeros or number of roots or number of solutions of the given polynomial. For example, we can see the curve touches at this point on the x-axis, that is the first point. It again touches the x-axis at this point, that is the second point, and it touches over here which is the third point. So we have the first, second and third root or zero or solution of the given polynomial. Remember that the curve has to touch only the x-axis to get the number of zeros of any given polynomial. So here our answer is going to be 3 because the curve touches at 3 points on the x-axis. After this let us move on to the next question. If minus 1 is a 0 of the polynomial p of x equal to x square minus 7x minus 8, then the other 0 is. They have already given you that one of the zeros of this polynomial is negative 1. We need to find out what is another 0 of the given polynomial. So we are going to use the factorization method that is the splitting the middle term and write it over here as x square minus 7x minus 8 is equal to 0. So let us take it this way. Now for this quadratic polynomial, we have the product as negative 8 and the sum as negative 7. So let me just write it over here. Now let us find out all the factors of negative 8. So let us write down the first combination as a negative 8 and multiply it with 1 that gives us negative 8. 8 times negative 1 gives us negative 8, 2 times negative 4 gives us negative 8 or negative 2 times 4 gives us negative 8. So these are the combinations which gives us a product of negative 8. Now we have to find out which of the combinations when added or subtracted give us a negative 7 as the sum. Let us try out with the first combination. That is when we add negative 8 with 1, 
we get the sum as negative 7. So this is the combination which satisfies the product as well as the sum. So we do not have to take rest of the combinations. So let us use these two factors to split the middle term and write it as x square and negative 7x gets split up as negative 8x plus 1x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now let us group them into two terms together. So these are the two terms and these are the two terms. Now from these two terms we have to find out what is a common term. We can see that x is in the first as well as second term. So we can take out the x and inside the bracket we have one more x left and from the second term we have negative 8 left. And from these two terms we do not have anything common. So we will just take it as plus 1 and here remains x minus 8 is equal to 0. Always keep looking for the terms which you have inside the bracket. They have to be same. If you get two different combinations that is x minus 8 here and x plus 8, somewhere you are going wrong in finding out the factors. So be careful. These two will verify that you are going in the correct direction. Now here from these two terms we have x minus 8 as a common term. So let me just write it as x minus 8. I am pulling it out as a common one. And from the first term if x minus 8 is pulled out only x remains and from the second term plus 1 remains this is equal to 0. Now we have found out two factors that is x minus 8 is equal to 0 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. Here let us take the minus 8 on the other side of the equal to sign so x becomes plus 8 and here x is equal to minus 1 since plus 1 has gone on the other side of the equal to sign. Now x equal to minus 1 was already given as a 0 of the polynomial so we have found out the second 0 of the polynomial as 8 which is our option D. With this let us move on to the fourth question. If one 0 of the quadratic polynomial x square plus 3x plus k is 2 then the value of k is now they have given one value of x which is equal to 2 which when we put it in this polynomial equation makes the entire polynomial go down to 0 so let us write down the equation first that is x square plus 3x plus k and let us equate it equal to 0 now since one zero value is given as 2, let us take x is equal to 2. So we are going to substitute in place of x 2. So we have 2 square plus 3 times 2 plus k is equal to 0. So 2 square is 4 plus 3 times 2 is 6 plus k is equal to 0. So 4 plus 6 is 10, so 10 plus k is equal to 0 or we get the value of k as a negative 10 that is by moving plus 10 on the other side of the equal to sign. So the value of k we got is negative 10. So the option is B. Let us move on to the fifth question now. If x equal to 3 is one of the roots of the quadratic equations x square minus 2kx minus 6 equal to 0, then the value of k is. So this is similar to the fourth one. So if you want to give a try, you can go ahead by pausing the video. Okay. Now here they have given you the polynomial, they have given you the value of x. We have to just find out the value of k. So this is pure substitution. So let me write down the polynomial first. So it's given as x square minus 2kx minus 6 is equal to 0. So here we have x as 3 which is given. So it is 3 square minus 2 times k times 3 minus 6 is equal to 0. Now 3 square we have is 9 minus 2 times 3 is 6 so it is 6k 
minus 6 is equal to 0. Now combining the like terms that is 9 minus 6 we get it as 3 minus 6k is equal to 0. Let us move the 3 on the other side of the equal to sign. So we have negative 6k is equal to negative 3 because 3 was positive after we have moved on the other side of the equal to sign it becomes negative. Now if both the sides we have negative we can just cancel them off or they divide each other. So we have now k is equal to 3 over 6 or it could be reduced as 1 over 2. So our option is option B 1 over Now let us move on to the last question of this video. The given linear polynomial y is equal to f of x has. Now in this case they have given us a linear straight line as you can see. So can you guess what is the answer over here? How many zeros this straight line has? Now first of all if it is a linear equation it is something of the form y is equal to mx plus c because it is a straight line. Now the degree of x in a straight line or in a linear equation is always 1. So here in this case if the power of x or the degree of x is 1 that means we have the roots or zeros or solutions of a linear equation as just 1. So if you remember in the second question I had mentioned that the curve has to touch the x-axis that is what tells us the number of zeros of the given equation. Now in this case we can see that the straight line touches the x-axis at only one point and the line touches the x-axis at point 3. This is the x value. So here in the options we can say that the given linear polynomial y equal to f of x has 1 0 and the 0 is at 3. So here the option is going to be B. I hope you have understood all the steps and like the video. In this video I have covered just 6 questions of the polynomial multiple choice questions. I will be uploading more videos on polynomial MCQs. Now if you know any other way of solving any of these questions do comment below. And if you are liking my videos like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.